So was Mueller's investigation and the partisan posturing that followed it worse than Russia's interference, as Kushner claims? Let's turn to former assistant U.S. attorney Nelson Cunningham and former CIA station chief Dan Hoffman. Welcome to you both. Good to have you here. Thank you. All right, so Dan, uh, what about the idea that this was Russia's plan all along, that they, they simply wanted to create chaos and division? I mean, you've got both sides of the aisle at each other's throats. So um, in some way, did they, we know that there were attempts to directly influence the in the election, but have they done so at least indirectly? Yeah, I mean, make no mistake, as the Mueller report correctly notes, there was sweeping and systemic interference from Russia to degrade our democratic process. But it was our self-inflicted partisan wounds afterwards. It's as if Putin injected a virus into our political process, and there were some willful carriers of that virus, including my old boss, John Brennan who speculated wildly and made unfounded claims about the president. And all that did was drive up the temperature of the partisan debate, which doesn't help Democrats and Republicans get along. OK, um, what, I, what do you make, Nelson, of the president's statements tonight to The Washington Post that, listen, I provided all of my White House staff, White House counsel. I let everybody go talk uh, to the special investigators for hours. We turned over more than a million documents. I didn't exert executive privilege. So no, I'm not going to let them go spy, speak to, he said, a party, meaning the Democrats. No. Well, I'd, I worked in the Clinton White House when Republicans were trying to investigate the Clinton White House. So I've seen this from both sides. And I've seen that usually the White House tries to resist and ultimately Congress gets its way and have, they have genuine oversight responsibilities uh, and they do have the court authority to get White House employees to come on up and talk on these investigative matters. But we'll see a push me pull you here for the next several weeks or months as they try to do that. Yeah, I mean, we look back into the Fast and Furious investigation under the Obama administration. They exerted executive privilege, and the Attorney General Eric Holder ended up in contempt of Congress because, the, you know, investigators then couldn't get what they were at. So this kind of thing plays out a lot on Capitol Hill. In the meantime, I want to point you guys to a, an article in The Federalist I know that you all have seen um, talking about seven glaring omissions in the Mueller report that they say kills its credibility. Um, one of them says there was no attempt with investigators um, to look at the uh, trouble underpinnings of this whole thing. It says, Russia Gate in many ways appears to be the fruit of a poisonous tree of epic proportions. They cite biases, ethical infractions, outright criminality, and clear double standards applied by law enforcement figures common to the Trump, Russia, and Hillary Clinton email investigations. Dan? Yeah, there's apparently some work to be done looking back at that, how the probe was initiated. And I think it looks to me like the American people would like to see that happen. Uh, I know we've talked a lot about the dossier uh, in the past, and I've always been concerned that it was a channel, potentially, for FSB disinformation. I have a hard time believing, as someone who served in Russia for many years, that the FSB, Russia's internal security police, wouldn't have known about it. So I think it is important to examine all of this, and, uh, and I'm sure that's what we're going to see in the coming weeks and months. Yeah, the piece also talks about the number of different people who were in some way connected to this investigation who had been at one point essentially FBI or CIA informants or had worked on their behalf, that none of that is mentioned in the report, um, and, and that there is barely any mention of the dossier at all. Um, they sum it up this way also in The Federalist uh, today. When the Mueller team found no collusion, it nevertheless proceeded to obstruction, but there was nothing to obstruct. By presenting the collusion section as it did, the council damaged the Trump administration to the greatest extent possible without affirming its criminality. It seems Mueller pulled a Comey. Nelson, of course, the reference to uh, then FBI yeah. Director Comey laying yeah. out the case against Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I, I have to say, I think that whole, that whole uh, piece is a stretch. Um, look, seven, all 17 of our intelligence agencies assessed last summer and into the fall, I'm sorry, in 2016 and in, after the election, that the Russians were mounting a campaign to try to influence our election and that there were concerns that they were trying to reach out to the president and the people around him. Um, that's all borne out by the Mueller report. In fact, there are m many, if not most, of the key facts in the dossier are, in fact, confirmed by the Mueller report. It says the Russians had mounted a campaign to get Democratic emails, confirmed. It says uh, the Russians had reached out to Trump through his real estate interests, confirmed. It said the person who knows Trump very well in Russia is are the, the Agalarovs, who I just mispronounced. Mm -hmm. They're the same people who, want, who set up the Trump Tower meeting in 2016. This was oh. all in this all the report and, and all confirmed by the, by the Mueller report. And a lot of people report. want to know why there wasn't more about the, the Trump Tower meeting, too, and whether that was potentially, as Trump supporters have claimed, a complete setup, Dan. 
Right. Two points about that. The way the Russian intelligence runs uh, covert action operations is they'll give you 90 percent truth and then they'll throw in 5 percent untruth. So you're used to seeing things you think, well, that's going to be true. Uh, yes, the President Trump knows the Agarales, but then there's the untrue parts and it'll encourage you to believe the falsehoods. That's the way they operate. As far as the Trump Tower meeting, in my view at least, that was the farthest thing I could ever imagine from a clandestine meeting. That was meant to be discovered. There were breadcrumbs leading all the way back to the Kremlin. Just like buying ads on Facebook with rubles or using the internet research agency run by Putin's own chef, Prigozhin. The Trump Tower meeting held in a place where you couldn't expect any clandestinity, lots of security, started by an email from Rob Goldstone and three Russians with very high profiles. I think that was, as the Russians like to say, a piece of free cheese. Um, and the only kind of free cheese the Russians like to say is in a mouse trap, unfortunately. Mm. Well, we have launched a, a lot of new questions with the answers we have gotten, but there's much more to come. So please come back. Talk Great. about that. We'll do that. Thank you.